Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another Tuesday night in the man cave. It's actually the 25th bloody uh, video I've done of this Tuesday night in the man cave. Crazy. Um, okay, so tonight we've got, um, what have we got? We've got a little bit of footage of uh, uh, Nay no, just in, a, uh, in, the, in the woodshed. I've got a new sticker for the sticker board with a twist on that one. We head out, head out to the uh, to the shack and just start doing a bit of a clean up out there. And I've also got a tiny little bit of footage of um, a cicada. It's a big bug looking thing that, <clears throat> anyway, you'll see that it comes up in the end of the bloody video. All right, so where are we going? We're going to check out Nay's woodshed. All right, so we're gonna have a quick look at uh, in Nay's shed and see what she's up to. <clears throat> What are we doing? Making a mess. Making a mess, as Making... per usual. You know I love a mess. A <laughs> mess is the only way to work. I like chaos. We got some more signs. Making them all old looking. Yeah, don't look at those two because they're crap. Uh, There's those. And the arrow. Oh, and the arrow. Look and at that. the arrow, because people love arrows. Now, yeah, she's got a new little bloody tooly thing. And it's a drill press vice, as you can see. I never bloody knew about these things. We would always try and hold stuff here and then drill down into it. But look at that. So we've just attached that to your normal bit. Come on, now give them a shot, see how it works. So this thing here, actually, sorry, no. So you can see, Nay's already done some, but these were all done by hand. And she got really clever. And using a tap and die thing which is yes ah that thing there so where's the buddy the whole do the lackey um so what are you gonna make out of that uh undecided it will either be handles ah or a coat rack ah cool <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i'll put screws in it either way and then we go from there so those things are actually uh train line spikes that she's cut cut off and then yeah doing that all right let's see this thing in operation i'll turn it on eh bloody simple <laughs> all right we'll leave you to it excellent all right, geez, I tell you what, guys, it's been bloody hot today. I think it got to about 38 degrees, which I think for the Americans is 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's not super hot, not for uh, us, but it's getting warm and it's just they're kind of leading up to what's coming. Um, so now we're going to go do the stickers, but with that twist, um, also with the sticker footage, which I just did before, it gets getting a little bit windy out there, but anyway, that's all right. Cool, here you go. Just yeah, let's get on with it. <laughs> All right, guys, so I've just turned up at the uh, post office or the delivery center. Where are we? There we go, the delivery center that I normally that I normally come to every day. Well, I do. I come here every day on a uh, working bloody day. But why I'm doing this is I'm going to show you where the stickers turn up. <laughs> Now I'm around, and here, down to there, and look at that, the A box number, 2277, jeez I can't even read that. What do we got? Oh, there's one. That is, oh, I've got to hide the bloody, I'm hopeless at hiding the addresses. Brent Bucker. Cool. Airmail, par avion. Yes, we got crap. Oh, oh, that's a bloody big one. Oh, I know what that is. Cool, nothing else in there? Empty. Alright, so I have got that uh, one uh, that one that you just saw. I can show the bloody address because it's a business address. I got a couple of business cards. Um, here's the sticker, it's a cool ass sticker. So it's Clay's Off-Road. And that's in New Brunswick. Um, Canada and it's funny I've been watching a show on Netflix called Zoo and they've been making references to a location which is New, Br New Brunswick um, Canada so I thought that was pretty cool anyway um, 
So I've got to apologise to Brent because I said, what do I, I don't know what I bloody said, but it's Brent uh, Black here. I didn't have my short lookers on, which I'll, uh, I'll now put on. It means that I can read names properly. All right, so same as usual. Hi, I just wanted to send you a sticker from our off-road bike shop in Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada. I've been watching your YouTube channel for a while and thought I'd uh, send you a sticker for the man cave. Check us out on Facebook. Cheers, Brent. Cool, thanks, man. All right, so we better put this sticker up before this place blows down. Hang on, I'll move you in over to, so we're going, uh, so there's the United States, we've got Canada, but New Brunswick is actually right over here. Actually, it might help if I bring you over. So yeah, we've got Canada, but New Brunswick is way over there. Oh, can I see it? Where is it? There it is there, right? Well, it's hard to see. Yeah, there it is. And Moncton, I believe is right just over there. So we'll get this sticker on. And I reckon what we'll do is we'll put it right up here because I don't think any too many people uh, live up there. So we can still see Greenland. Bloody ripper. Well, there we go. Clay's off road down here in New Brunswick, Canada. There you are. Cool. Moncton. And as you can see, I've been putting those, um, all those little line things up. All my cottons. If I had my time again on doing this board, I would have put this map onto um, uh, a cork board. Because what I've got to use, I've got to use it's um, MDF board that I've put it on. So I've got to use, I've got to hammer these bloody little tacks in. And then all this uh, cotton string wool, whatever you want to call it, I've got to tie it around there, tie it around there, and then I bloody use my little flame thing to burn them off. And Obviously if I had a bloody um, cork board, I could just use a pin, I'd pin it in there, and I'd pin through the bloody, through the, um, the cotton, it would have made myself a whole lot easier, but hey. Sometimes you just make it hard for yourself. <laughs> All right, back over there. All right, guys, so I'm gonna let you know that I do have another thing that came in the mail. I came in the mail today. Um, it's from Neil Rose here in Victoria, but I'm not gonna show you this today. I'm gonna to show it tomorrow. It's not a sticker. It's just a product that he sent. He has no affiltation to it. I reckon I've seen something pop up on Facebook in regards to this, so I'm a bit excited, but I wanted to um, have a bit of a play with it before I do it, so that'll be coming up next Tuesday. All right. Let's head over and see the, uh, actually it's over that way. Let's head over and uh, check out the shack. All right guys, so we've come out to the shack. I've, I've brought Charlie out. What I'm doing is I was trying to film while I was walking the bike. I'm walking the bike in so that I don't leave, I leave the least amount of track. Um, I noticed coming in that there's already been motorbikes running through the tracks here, so I don't want to create one mark where people can see, oh, there's a little track, wonder what goes off into here. So I'll have to obviously come in on different spots or just watch what I'm doing. And obviously being off the bike and just cruising along, um, I was trying to film when I couldn't do it. So I'm gonna put you down over here and uh, basically show you what I'm doing. Well, you gotta hate that guys. I just bloody went to grab me tripod, which I had sitting in there. And it's gone. It's actually my bloody good one. So I'm gonna to have to backtrack and see where the hell it's fallen out. Well, there you go, guys. I found it. It was actually quite a long way bloody back. Cool. I'll see you back at the shack. Okay, so I went back to where I'd normally go in, and I can see a clear line in the in the undergrowth. Just that, yeah, you know, that crappy stuff. You can see the tires of Charlie um, going in there. So I've come a ways down. I'm gonna come in on that shack in a different, uh, a different way, a more direct route. But uh, I don't want Charlie going through there. Not just yet, anyway. You know what kids are like. It'll be kids. You know, kids are getting there and bloody stuff around and whatever. So, um, all right, I'll see you over there. All right, guys. So uh, that was actually a fair way from that uh, track, and there's no way that uh, you would see this. It just, as you're walking towards it, it's just nothing. There's just nothing here. It was actually crazy. Can you hear the motorbikes? 
So there's obviously a, a motorbike or a couple of motorbikes riding around, so I'll keep a listen out because <clears throat> I've got Charlie sitting out there. Not that anybody want to pinch me bloody pasty bike. Um, all right, so what we've got to do is uh, brought myself some water, some gloves, got my bloody tripod. Um, so what I want to do just for the moment is just clean everything up. So just kind of move all the bloody big logs out the way, get all the tin, move them out the way. Now obviously we're in Australia um, and in Victoria, uh, brown snake, which is one of the most venomous um, snakes in the world, um, is proliferant through here. Um, there's like the eastern brown, the common brown. There's quite a, they all look, they're all a little bit different, but they're basically a brown snake. Some are light, some are dark, some young ones have rings and bits and pieces. But they're a ground dwelling um, snake. They love kind of open, cleared areas. I mean, obviously, there's always exceptions to the rules, and everything's bloody a little bit different, you know. There are, um, but they don't make a a hole in the ground like when I showed that other one with the hole that would have been a rabbit's hole it didn't look fresh like a fresh rabbit's hole so that would be a prime spot for a snake to go and go oh thanks Mr Rabbit I'll have this and what they'll do is they'll let hibernate in there over winter come spring they lay their eggs and um, I don't think it's about 11 weeks or something like that all the little baby uh, baby snakes come out so they will take refuge in cracks, um, in dirt and rocks and, you know, if this stuff hasn't been moved for a long time, very well there could be um, snakes in there. Now, only with snakes, basically, you just got to respect them, you don't have to fear the bloody things. Uh, and obviously being an Aussie, I was brought, brought up, I don't know, it's just like second nature. I know here that, whoa, hang on a minute spiders and snakes there might be in there so I just be cautious you don't want to surprise a snake you don't want to corner a snake uh, brown snakes um, not only are they the mo one of the most venomous they're very aggressive especially if they're cornered or surprised and they will actually go you so but normally <clears throat> like while I'm here now I'm not gonna have a brown snake bloody you know come up and go oh look out there's a there's a human there, I'll go and have him. He won't. He doesn't want a bar of me. It's only when you surprise them or go into where they are. All right, I'm gonna shut up, set up the tripod, and then I'll just start. What I'm gonna do is basically um, just make some noises around everything. You'll most probably, if there's anything there, they'll know I'm already here, but we'll just start tapping and whatever. And then I'll just gingerly grab bits and pieces being wary, <coughs> spiders and snakes. Cool, all right, I'm shutting up now. Rightio guys, so we'll start rattling these bloody things around. All right, well, there you go. So, nothing. I think one cockroach, that's about it. <laughs> so, that's that's pretty bloody good, actually. All right, so now I'm just going to get all that uh, iron, stick it up out of the way, and then start doing all that stuff. But I won't show you that shit. I'll come back to this. All right, guys, so that is all the iron just stacked up over here. I've also, there was this, um, obviously, that was a, um, what do you call it, an iron spring bloody thing off an old bed. Um, and then that uh, that cable stuff that was there. So that's all the man-made shit just in that pile there So now it's just rocks and uh, sticks and bloody branches and bits and pieces so far so good No creepy crawlies All 
I see over here, they've obviously uh, tried to do one over this side as well. Over there, but there's no tin, it's just obviously done out of branches. You can see this here, this little track thing, it goes around, down, around there. And basically, what I think that is, is because through here you'll see this is like the, the single track stuff that the little buddy, you know, I don't know, Kawasaki KX80s and, you know, all the little bikes that the, that, that the kids jump on. They make themselves little motocross tracks in, um, in little spots. And I reckon that's what this is here. Um, but it just hasn't been, it's just been forgotten about, I think, or I hope, I suppose. All right. I'll stop blabbling on. I'll, uh, now I'll just get rid of all the, uh, all the logs and bits and pieces out of there. And then we'll look at the, uh, the structure of those rocks and, and see what we're going to do there. Cool, all right. All right, just found some more bloody uh, cable. So tell you what, when I was doing that, uh, that tin, man, it was making a bloody racket. As soft as I was doing it, it was just like crack. It's like thunder <laughs> bouncing off all the bloody hills. All right. Made plank. I don't want that falling on my head later on. Alrighty, well that was pretty bloody simple, that was bloody easy, that hasn't taken me any time at all. Um, Alright, I'll give you a look around. All right, so this is what we are now left with. So all this wood here will be basically uh, no good for us. Anything structural, that'll be just firewood. It's just, um, it's too far gone. So I've got this, oh, bloody hell, get off me. Um, so this wall here really can't like, oh, shit. So it comes into it like a V. <coughs> Uh, I'd, I'd really like to have this basically come out from that tree, really come out here, keep it a fairly wide um, angle. Now remember guys, um, for international guys, um, this is Australia, it doesn't, you know, in winter it gets cold, but it's not like what you guys, like, you know, in Canada and America and bloody the UK and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> it doesn't get that cold that we need to be. You know, worrying that side of it. There's, we don't get a huge amount of rain. Obviously, we get rain and stuff like that. But you know, it, someone was saying it was when we were walking out here uh, on the last video that uh, the crunching as we walk along, everything's crunching. And they said, like in the UK, you just never get that. Everything's soggy under bloody foot. Uh, well, that's not the case here. Well, in, the, in where I am, yeah. You know, if you're up further up in Australia, Australia is so bloody big. There's just so many different climates. Um, and in reality, um, Australia doesn't have um, a four season climate. I think it's like bloody, I don't know, six or seven or something like that. If you ask the Aboriginals, they'll tell you. And they bloody know. All right, so I think I'm going to leave this for now. If I try and give you guys a pretty good look at it, because I'm open to suggestions. So I'm thinking, and as you know, if you've watched any of my videos, I uh, start one way and end up a different way. But I reckon bringing out that uh, wood out here, or the, the rocks, so I've got a wide area here. Now there's plenty of um, downed uh, wood out here, 
so it's just a matter of me trying to find uh, a decent size that hasn't rotted too far I obviously will not be touching anything that's living um, I'm in a public area so my whole rule is that I can't I can't um, I don't want to damage anything. I want to, if anything, making it better. And I think by fixing this up, it might make it better. Um, but you know, if a ranger happens to find uh, find me and find this, or I get, I don't even know what the rules are actually for doing stuff like this. Um, if I cop a fine, I cop a fine. I'll have to cop it on the chin. But like I said, I don't think anybody's going to bloody uh, see me out here. Um, but yeah, so I just don't want to do any damage to whether it's, you know, habitat. It's like the snakes. If I, if I happen to find a snake here, um, you know, I'm not going to try and kill the bloody thing. And in actual fact, in the state of Victoria, in Australia, you know, all, all the animals, they're all protected. You can't, you can actually be fined, um, a hell of, I think it's like $28,000 up to that, you know, for killing a snake. I mean, if you have to kill one because it's bloody, you know, it, you're in a predicament or whatever you're gonna bloody kill it but you don't go out to kill it um, and I'm not uh, I'm not about that the snakes and spiders they all have their purpose snakes keep all the rodents down like the bloody you know the rabbits and mice rats um, you know the brown snakes they'll eat they'll eat you know rats mice um, lizards they'll eat lizards up to the the stumpy tail lizards um, and they're a fairly fairly thick round stumpy looking bloody thing but that's as bad as big as they go uh, for eating purposes um, yeah so there you go I'm babbling <laughs> um, yeah so I got this yeah so there you go guys if you've got any thoughts so I've said move that out that way I'll most probably see if we can set up um, some big poles that lean up against there and then we'll be braced because I don't know whether I'll be able to dig in there and whether I want to dig too much um, and then obviously as we come out I'll have another one out here so I've got some trees little trees here that oh that's a bloody shit one um, that I can use for bracing without having to be trying to dig too big holes and stuff like that um, and then it's just a matter of like doing tripod type things to make them stable. Then once you get the roofing on and get all that, it'll, that'll firm everything up. I'm not a builder either. <laughs> I'm winging it. All right, guys, that's it. Let's get back to the bloody, uh, back to the man cave. Well, there you go, guys. Cool. So I was so bloody happy to have found that tripod. The tripod that you guys are on at the moment, that's my best bloody tripod. It's just so easy to use. That's the three things now that I've dropped off the back of the bike and that I've actually been able to find. The first thing was on uh, Harry the Cruiser. That was when I did the tent uh, review, which was years and years ago, and I lost the bloody my uh, cruiser jacket off the back. I was able to retrace and I found that. The second one was when me and Ken did the Simpson Desert. I don't know, we would have been most probably, I don't know, uh, Una Data out past there or something on some bloody track and I lost my 12 litre um, fuel bladder, which I needed to make it across the Simpson Desert. Luckily, uh, Ken actually grabbed that for me. Um, and then yeah, it's just bloody off, off the back of a post. He has three different bikes too. <laughs> Crazy, all right. Now, I wanted to quickly show you. So with that shack, I've gone and got myself some tools that I'm gonna be able to use out there, stuff that I can carry on a motorbike. First thing, is an axe, not for chopping down trees or anything like that, it's for chopping into trees, making bloody, you know, gouging bits and pieces or whatever. So I've got that, so it's a uh, Fiskars X, Fiskars X7, I was gonna get the X5, but they didn't have the X5, but I'm thinking now after getting this and playing with it in the backyard, I'm actually glad to have the extra handle, I think the X5 has a handle to about there which makes it good for doing the small stuff, but this just gives you that bit of extra bloody uh, oomph. So I've got that. I've got a uh, folding saw, and that's a Fiskus as well. Look, I don't know brands and all that kind of stuff. I've just looked and whatever, and I thought, oh, they, these look all right. So basically, yeah, so that'll be, uh, you know, cutting up wood to, to size to, to do whatever. And a pick. A little baby pick. So just for gouging bits, maybe putting poles in and stuff like that. Yeah, it'll come in handy. 
course, lots of paracord. All right, so I said I was going to show you show you a bit of footage about a cicada. So here you go. Hey guys, when I'm out in the bush um, and you hear that uh, that noise, that and when we, the last time was when I was at um, oh, I was with Alistair and we we're in the high country, and when we got back, it was just at the campsite. It was that deafening sound, <clears throat> and I said it was the cicadas. It was the first time I've ever had one at home actually on the I was out it was actually on the lawn and I nearly stepped on it. I wonder what the hell this noise was and a vibration. That there is a cicada. So if we get Nay to hold the camera. Oh, sorry, I can do sorry. This guy up. That's the size of him. This guy's obviously on his way out. He should be up in a tree somewhere. But that's that, that noise they make. There he is. They're big buggers. Totally, totally, uh, totally harmless. But, um, yeah, he's running, he's running, his battery's running low. <laughs> Um, and I think the, the noise is when they flutter their, um, a bit like a cricket when the cricket um, rubs its back legs together, makes that noise. Yeah, so anyway. It's like a little toy. Anyway, we'll leave him, we'll leave him there. Cool, just thought I'd show you. Alright guys, I was just doing a bit of uh, research on uh, Google, the all-seeing oracle, um, about these cicadas. So apparently um, there's about 200 species here in Australia. There are some in North America, um, I believe. Well, that's what they said. Um, it's only the males that make that singing noise. And apparently the... Um, the noise isn't from rubbing of the of the wings. It's actually in their abdominal. There's some membrane. Apparently, scientists are still trying to bloody work it out. Um, some of the oh, some of the species, uh, which is called the, the double drummer, actually produces. When you're up close to it, they've got it at 120 decibels. Now, the reason why they make that noise, or what they believe it makes the noise, is uh, to keep predators away. So when they make that noise the birds um, struggle to communicate with each other and also they don't like that sound. Um, so birds, spiders and ants and all that kind of stuff is what feed on them. They only have a short lifespan as in when they're an adult cicada, when they're in the tree, they live for only a few weeks. But um, when they're first born, they're born as nymphs and um, they'll actually crawl down to the ground and they burrow into the ground and they can live there. The ones in Australia will live there for, um, I think it was three to seven years, but the ones in North America can live up to 13 years in the ground. Then they come out. And obviously it's, it's predetermined in their gene as um, when they come out, I think, because they all come, so, so some seasons you'll have it where there's lots, you'll hear these cicadas more so than other years. Um, and the idea is that they all come out at the one time so that they have a better chance of survival because there's lots of them making lots of noise which keeps the predators away. Bloody crazy. <laughs> Learning shit in the man cave. All right, guys. Cool. So there you go, guys. That's another Man Cave Tuesday done and dusted. Um, the rain is actually finally just starting to come, which is good. It'll uh, help cool things down and also uh, keep the lawns green. Uh, so that's it guys, as always, keep on riding, and remember if you're not riding, keep on keeping on.